Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk here. Uh, today I will talk about wedge-like classification of real-valued function, uh, which are introduced uh, by Adam, Rod, and Linda very, very recently. So uh, uh, they, Danny Westrick, uh, introduced the notion, uh, uh, various, various reducibility notions for real-valued functions. Uh, <coughs> So this, their reducibility notion uh, defined to resemble uh, several classical computability theoretic uh, reducibility notions, such as many one reducibility, true stable reducibility, and uh, uh, Turing reducibility. Uh, so the, one of the most interesting aspect of their, their work is that so they found that these reducibility notions are connected to uh, the uh, the, the notions from uh, analysis and descriptive set theories, such as Brugan rank and Kekris Rubo rank. So, yeah, it is yeah, worth studying very much. So, okay, so, I, I, so today I'd like to uh, give a full detail of the structure of their reducibility notions. So, but to do this, so, uh, so I'll point out uh, that so it is better to. Uh, consider these reducibility notions as, uh, as, a, as some variants of uh, weight reducibilities uh, rather than some computability theoretic notions. Then, so we can use uh, various descriptive set theoristic uh, uh, methods, such as game theoretic methods, to give a full description of uh, their, reduce, their degree structures. OK, so I. Okay, so let's begin with this slide. Okay, so uh, as I said, recently they, Danny Westerick, introduced uh, many one through stable Turing reducibility for real valued functions. So the purpose of my talk is to give a full description of the structure of the many one and Turing reducibilities, but for real valued functions. Uh, so, but uh, be cautious that, so without mentioning, we always assume uh, AD plus, uh, which consists of uh, dependent cho uh, so ZF plus dependent choice and uh, uh, the statement that every subset of real is infinity Borel and uh, plus uh, infinity, uh, sorry, uh, ordinary determinacy. Uh, but of course, so if you are only interested in Borel sets or Borel class functions, of course we can remove these uh, set theoretic assumptions. So every result presented in this talk is probably within ZFC. Also, if we restrict our attention to projective sets and the functions, when, then we can assume uh, so every result is probably within ZF plus DC plus uh, projective determinacy. And or maybe we can, uh, uh, e even we just assume ZFC, so our result holds it, uh, locally holds it, uh, which means our result holds in LR. Okay, so now, so I'll begin with uh, giving the definition of many one reducibility for real valued functions, uh, originally introduced by Danny, Downey, uh, Day, and Downey and Westerick. So, okay, so this basically uh, estimates uh, how, uh, how difficult to separate the level sets of a given function. So this means that, okay, so, okay, so the, this definition is slightly different from the original definition, but uh, uh, actually this is uh, equivalent to the, the original definition. Okay, so we say that for a real value, uh, okay, so now, okay, so uh, to simplify our argument, we assume every, uh, the domain of uh, a given function is control space, but uh, as already uh, so studied by Dave Dini Westrix, so we can assume uh, uh, a fun function has a more general domain without uh, affecting results. Uh, but okay, so we, but to simplify our argument, we assume every function uh, is uh, has a domain in control space, and the range is uh, the real line. Okay, so for such real valued functions, F and G, uh, we say that F is M reducible to G if 
given rationals P and Q, uh, there are R and S, there are rationals R, R and S, and the continuous function, theta on control space, such that if something separates the uh, lower level set and the upper level set, then the premiage of this Z and the theta also separates the uh, lower level set and the upper level set for F. So basically this is so the separating level sets of F is more easier than separating level sets of G. So, okay, so, so basically, so theta uh, works as this. So, okay, so if x, so fx is in the upper level set, then, okay, theta maps this uh, in the uh, upper set, or upper level set of G. And also, if, if this point is contained in the lower level set of F, then, okay, so theta, ma theta has to map this to a point in the lower level set in G. But uh, maybe some, some, some point outside of uh, these level sets can, can go inside upper level sets, uh, upper level set of G, or maybe uh, lower level set of G. So, so this is the definition of M reducibility. And uh, okay, so then, okay, so they introduced, uh, so they, Downey Westerlick, introduced the many one reducibility, and then, okay, so they found the connection uh, between this M reducibility and the, uh, some kind of rank in analysis. Okay, so this is a rank defined by Brugger in 1980. Okay, so let's co again consider a function from control space to the real line, and P and Q are rationals. So we consider the following de uh, derivative procedure, uh, which is yeah, something like can, uh, control Bendixon derivative. So basically, so, so this, okay, consider uh, a function f and, uh, okay, so something like this, and consider upper levels, so p and q, so here p, rational p, and here rational q. And uh, okay, so every, de so derivation process removes every point uh, which does not, uh, uh, so whose os oscillation is a few. Uh, so if, we, so I mean, okay, so, so we remove a point x, if there is some interval including x, so the, uh, and the value of uh, on the, this interval uh, only uh, in, in this side or only in this side, then we remove this interval. So, so this basically says, so, so, so this does not bridge level sets then we remove it uh, in, in, in one process, so one derivation procedure. And, uh, but uh, for example, okay, so if this is a, this, this point X is a discon so point of discontinuity and uh, there's something X prime, and maybe so function jumps, uh, the, this function jumps like this, so at, at the point X or so something like this. So for example, So go this way. So in this case, so, so for any interval including x prime, uh, so, uh, so the, the image of f uh, intersects with both level sets. So, so in this case, this point x is not removed by the, by the derivation procedure. So in this way, we can define the notion of derivation for, for a given function and a given rationals. Okay, so, and, uh, okay, so then iterate this derivation procedure, uh, which starts from the control space. And, uh, okay, so the successor level is just uh, one derivation from the previous level. 
and uh, the, for the, the limit for the limit levels is defined by the intersection of the previous levels. And then the Brugan rank is defined in this way. So the minimum ordin ordinal, the least ordinal such that uh, for every rational, uh, this derivation procedure uh, reaches at the empty set at some, some ordinal less than or equal to alpha. OK, so in this way, we define the notion Brugan rank. And uh, OK, so it is easy to see that uh, alpha of f is equal to 1 if and only if f is continuous. And uh, the rank alpha, of, the Brugan rank exists if and only if f is a bare one function. OK, so this is very useful notion when we study a bare one function. So and uh, then, OK, so they, Downey Westerick, uh, found that, OK, so, the, so there's a very strong connection between this Brugan rank and uh, the many one uh, reducibility introduced by them. OK, so first, for every bare one function, uh, the uh, M reducibility is finer than the Brugan rank in this sense, if the Brugan rank of F is less than or equal to the Brugan rank of G, then F is M reducible to G. And uh, the first rank, the Brugan rank one, uh, consists of two M degrees. And the bottom M degree consists of constant functions. And the second bottom degree consists of continuous functions, continuous non-constant functions. And then, OK, every successor rank above one consists of four M degrees. So for example, in the, this is a uh, degrees in the Brugan rank two. So this part is upper semi-continuous functions and this part is lower semi-continuous function. And but, but there are some other two degrees in the Brugan rank two. And uh, OK, so also Brugan rank three consists of four M degrees and so on. And each limit Brugan rank consists of a single only one M degree like this. And then each successor level like this, success, so the level, the rank of uh, omega plus one contains four degrees like this. So they called uh, one-sided, two-sided, right-sided, left-sided. Okay, so this, this gives a full description of the M degrees of bare one functions. So then, okay, so a natural question is, okay, so then what happens if we consider non bare one functions? So I will give the uh, answer of the, the question. OK, so there are results holds everywhere, even for non bare function, even for non borel function. So OK, so the structure of the many m degrees of the real function looks like this, this. OK, yeah, this is just the other. OK, so this part is the same as the day down in Westerick's result. And we, we can also show the similar things above omega 1. OK, so in, in the case of the bare 1 function, the rank is at the most omega 1. But there, OK, so if we consider a non bare 1 function or non borel function, so we, the, the rank uh, become, uh, become more than omega 1. Actually, so the, the m degrees, the day down in Westerick m degree, form a semi very order of height. Theta. Uh, theta is the uh, least ordinal uh, such that there is no surjection from reals to this ordinal. And OK, so under the, the detail of this structure is described as this. For a limit ordinal, xi less than theta, oh, and uh, uh, finite, finite number n, the the day down in Westerick M rank uh, C plus 3N plus 6 i consists of two incomparable degrees like this. Uh, so, but this 6 i depends on the cofinality of uh, xi. Uh, so, okay, if xi is equal to zero, then 6 i is equal to two. Uh, if, cofinal, if the cofinality of xi is omega, uh, then 6 i is equal to one. 
And uh, if the cofinality of xi is bigger than or equal to omega 1, then c xi is equal to 0. So, okay, so, uh, so if, okay, so if, uh, yeah, so for this part, uh, so this just means just the first omega ranks. So the, 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 the day, uh, day down new asterisk m rank, uh, xi plus 3 n plus c xi consists of two, two incomparable degrees. So this part, and, uh, and the, if this is, this starts from the limit ordinal of uh, uh, finality omega, then the, the plus one part, uh, so three n plus one part become two, uh, consists of two incomparable degrees. And it, so if this, uh, this starts from a limit ordinal of the finality uh, bigger than or equal to omega one, then so this uh, three n part uh, consists of two incomparable degrees, like this picture. Okay, so this is my uh, main result. So, but I, so I will give the uh, detail of this result later, and I will give uh, the, the meaning of this, this something sigma omega jr, sigma omega one, so on, uh, so in the later slides. But this is just, the, okay, so summary of my result. And uh, okay, so, uh, okay, I, I, I will explain this later. So, and also, okay, so this is a, a result for uh, m degrees, but uh, okay, so they down in Westrick also introduced uh, the notion of true stable reducibility and Turing reducibility for real valued functions. So, okay, so next, uh, so, I, so I first give summary of my results. So, okay, so before giving the detail of uh, my result about the m degrees, uh, I, I will, uh, talk about the second, my result about uh, t degrees for t, uh, for real valid functions. Okay, so, uh, so the notion of t degrees for real valid functions is connected to the uniform Martin conjecture in some sense. So, okay, so previously I have shown that the wedge degrees is um, basically almost the same as natural Turing, uh, natural many one degrees in the sense of the uniform Martin conjecture. Uh, I mean, the natural many one degrees means uh, uh, a many one degree which is relativizable and uh, uniformly degree invariant in the sense of many one degree. So, okay, so now, okay, so that uh, Day and Downey and Westrick introduced the t reducibility for real valued function as parallel continuous strong bias of reducibility. Okay, like this, f is true, f is t reducible to g if and only if f is a continuous strong bias of reducibility to the parallelization of z. So, the, so f is uh, so Turing reducible to G. So there exist uh, continuous functions such that uh, F F is V composition, G composition, U. Ah, sorry, the parallelization. Here, the par par uh, parallelization means that uh, where, uh, so G hat, so G hat takes a sequence of inputs, uh, sequence as an input, and return a sequence. This is a definition of parallel continuous strong bias of reducibility. So they, they Downey Westrick introduced the T reducibility in this way. Okay, so now uh, my main theorem is that the day Downey Westrick uh, T degrees is uh, natural, so exactly the natural Turing degrees in some sense. So in the sense of uniform Martin conjecture. Okay, so I, I will give you the meaning of this. Uh, later, 
OK, so anyway, so, so in this way, so these uh, notions of reducibility for our real value functions is yeah, very, very interesting objects. So, but there, okay, so to stay, so to give a de so detail of uh, our methods and uh, our, so our results, so I first give an introduction to descriptive set theory. Uh, particularly, so introduction to wedge degree theory. Okay, so I, so when I, call, uh, I say something is a point class, uh, this means that uh, it is a subset of bare space. And the dual of a point class is just a collection of all complements uh, of a set in, in, in the set gamma. And uh, a point class gamma is called the self dual if uh, this coincides with the dual of uh, the, the point class itself. And so this is, so we say that for, for subsets of bare space A and B, A is wedge reducible to B if there exists a continuous function. Uh, so for any point in bare space, F of A, so X is contained in A, if and only theta of X is contained in B. So it is equivalent to saying that A is the inverse image of B and a theta. So this is a kind of a type two version of many one reducibility. So introduced by wedge. And uh, so in descriptive set theory. And we say that the subset of bare uh, space is uh, self dual. Uh, A is wedge equivalent to the complement of A. So so this is also equivalent to saying that uh, the point class generated by A in this sense is self dual. So this is a set of all Bs uh, such that B is wedge reducible to A. So for example, uh, every delta, yeah, so delta zero alpha, so delta zero one, delta zero two, delta zero three, or delta one one, delta one two, uh, are self dual, uh, but sigma zero one, sigma zero two, pi zero one, pi zero two, sigma zero alpha, pi zero alpha are all non self dual. So the basic result about the wedge degrees is this: the wedge degrees are semi well ordered. This means that the size of a maximal and the size of anti chain is at most two. And, there, and it is the, the structure of wedge degrees is well founded. And yeah. Okay, so, and so in particular, so uh, non self dual, uh, non self dual pairs are well ordered. So I, I will write non, uh, and uh, so I will write non self dual, dual pairs like this gamma alpha and the dual of gamma alpha, uh, where theta. Is the ordinal as, explain, as I explained before? Okay, so the important okay, so the important property about the point class is a separation property. So we say that the point class has a separation property if okay, so for every gamma set a, a and b, there exists a delta set separating a and b. So for every a, a b in gamma. If this is a disjoint, so then there exists a delta set. I mean, this a set in the intersection of gamma and the dual of gamma. Uh, C separates this A and B. This. So for example, uh, pi zero alpha has a separation property for any countable ordinal. Sigma one one and pi one two has the separation property. And under the projective determinancy, sigma one two n plus one and pi one two n plus two have the separation property. And okay, so this is an important theorem uh, proved by Van West, Van Wasep, and Steele. Okay, exactly one of gamma alpha and the dual of gamma alpha has a separation property. So exactly one of them has a separation property. So we can. Name 
uh, all wedge degree uh, in a consistent way. I mean, so we, so by pi alpha, we mean the one which has a, a separation property uh, from, uh, so this is either, either gamma alpha or gamma, gamma uh, the dual of gamma alpha. So exactly one of them has a separation property. So we, we call uh, the one which has a separation property pi alpha. And uh, we call uh, uh, the other one sigma alpha. And then, okay, we define delta alpha as an intersection of sigma alpha and pi alpha. Okay, so then the structure looks, the structure of the wedge degrees looks like this. So this is an empty set, full space, open set, open, closed, delta zero to F sigma pi G delta and so on. And okay, so the point is that, okay, so cofi oh, cofinality omega part starts from the delta, delta degree. And uh, if cofinality is bigger than omega, then it starts from the non-self dual degrees. So this is the basic property of the wedge degrees. So basically, so delta one means a closed open set, sigma one means open sets, pi one means a closed sets, and delta alpha, sigma alpha, pi alpha for alpha less than omega one uh, means, oh, means the alpha level of the Hausdorff difference hierarchy. And uh, so, so sigma, so be careful that sigma, sorry, I, I said the incorrect thing before, but so, so be careful that, so F sigma is a sigma omega one, and G delta is pi omega one. And so sigma zero, so three is sigma omega one to the omega one, so, okay, like this. Uh, okay, so this is a, a picture of wedge degrees uh, in a way. Uh, so every wedge degree can also be written uh, as so as a tree, yeah, some kind of tree. So zero one value, zero one labeled trees, but nested zero one labeled trees. So for example, okay, so we can represent a sigma one process like this, so starting from zero, but we can change our guess once, so uh, one time, so this basically represents uh, sigma zero one process. So we, so we, we start from the guess zero, and uh, but we can change the guess. So and one zero means so this is pi zero one procedure, and uh, every wedge degree can be described in this way. A uh, Borel wedge degree can be described in this way. Uh, so uh, every wedge degree of Borel a uh, Borel set can be described in this way. So basically, so uh, so in, in this a form of represented space. So basically, so we can. Uh, so we can give a representation of this tree by using a Sierpinski-like representation. So we consider this as a Sierpinski space. And then, okay, so this circle means a jump of a representation in the context of a computable analysis. So in the context of a TTE. Then, for example, we can, so we can say that, so a subset of Bell space is F sigma if and only if the the characteristic function of this set uh, as a function from Bell space to the jump of Sierpinski space is continuous. So basically, so, okay, so we can say that A is, for example, uh, rank omega one times two, uh, if and only if the characteristic function from Bell space to this space is continuous. So, and uh, okay, so the, the rank is uh, give, like, given like this. Uh, so, so basically, so sigma omega one is F sigma, and so omega one, uh, yeah, omega one square is a difference of two de G delta sets, and omega one square, a uh, pi omega one square is a difference of two, two F sigma sets, and uh, okay, so, uh, so in, in this way, we can define the difference hierarchy starting from uh, sigma zero two. And this is uh, about the uh, delta zero four set. 
So, okay, so this is a nest, nested tree representation of delta zero four sets. Uh, so, so we can consider <coughs> the, these nested tree as a represented space as in the pre, as I previously mentioned. Okay, so and uh, okay, so we can go further. So, for example, sigma zero n pi zero n, the wedge rank of sigma zero n and pi zero n is uh, just the nth level of the super exponential higher super exponential hierarchy, but the, whose base is omega one. And then, okay, we can consider the analog of epsilon epsilon naught, uh, but the, the analog of epsilon naught at base omega one is different from uh, delta zero omega. So the correct wedge rank of delta zero omega, so sigma zero omega and pi, pi zero omega is this. So the omega one speaks the point of the exponential of base omega one. And okay, we can go further. So we can define the Weberian hierarchy of base omega one. And uh, okay, so we can characterize the, uh, the wedge rank of sigma zero, generally sigma zero alpha, pi zero alpha, and so on. And okay, sigma, the wedge rank of sigma one one is, is so some, some kind of soup of Weberian hierarchy. Okay, so, but we don't need this detailed picture of the wedge degrees of Borel sets. Uh, so, but this is just uh, some introduction to wedge degree theory. Okay, so now we introduce the notion of a general, general wedge reducibility notion, for, but for any partial order. Okay, so let Q be a partial order. Uh, and for, for fa so now consider Q valued function uh, whose domains are omega omega. So, we say that uh, Q valued function A is Q wedge reducible to B if there exists a continuous function such that for every point in bare space, A of X is Q below uh, B of theta of X. So this is a generalization of the usual wedge reducibility. Uh, because so if we so we consider Q as a uh, discrete order on two. So we just consider this zero one, but uh, there's no order between zero and one. Then this give, so if we define Q as this, then, okay, so this gives a usual uh, wedge, wedge reducibility. So if we consider this Q, then this is equivalent to the, the original wedge reducibility notion. And uh, now we consider uh, some order which is different from two, zero, one value. So we consider Plotkin's order, uh, which sometimes used in domain theory, or sometimes TDE. So Plotkin order consists of the three elements, zero, one, and the bottom. So bottom is below zero and one, and zero and one are incomparable. Yeah, actually, which has already studied the, the T wedge degrees, but in the different terminology, he just called this as a pair reducibility. But uh, so which actually so studied uh, T wedge reducibility notion. So and uh, he showed that the T wedge degrees are semi well ordered as uh, two wedge degrees, but structure is slightly different. So. There are a lot of uh, property wedge degree which cannot uh, be realized as uh, a two wedge degree. And uh, this is a uh, general theorem by Fan, Fan Engelen, Mira, and Steele. So if Q is better class ordered, uh, so is the Q wedge degrees. So, okay, so in particular, the T wedge degrees are semi well ordered. Okay, so now I, I will explain the detail of uh, the, the method of my result. Okay, uh, okay, so I, I, in, I need, so I also need uh, uh, another variant of wedge reducibility. Okay, so we call this as a QM wedge, wedge reducibility. Okay, so as before, let Q be a partial order, and A and B, uh, uh, Q-valued functions on, on bare space. Then, okay, so we say that uh, A is Q-M wedge reducible to B if uh, there are 
function on omega and the continuous function on bell space such that for every point in bell space, uh, so a m x, so this is a m concatenate x, m is a natural number. So first bit of this sequence of m and then concatenate x uh, following m. So a m x is q reducible to b uh, psi m theta m x. So yeah, basically so in the game theoretic context, so this just this means that Okay, so we, okay, so first player, uh, okay, so first player chooses M, and the second player must choose it. So we, so the second player is not allowed to, to pass uh, at the first, first move. So, so the, the second player must choose N at the first, at the first round, and then okay, so one. So then at, at the second round, so okay, so one also chooses some natural number x zero, and the two may choose some, something y zero and maybe x one. But okay, so after the second round, the two can allowed to put the pass at the e. e after the second round. But at the first round, uh, the second player is not allowed to put the pass. So maybe one, 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 one two. Hmm? Ah, yeah, this is a, a natural number. Yeah, every, everything is natural numbers. And then, okay, so basically, so two wins if, uh, so A, M, X is Q below B, N, Y. So this, this game characterizes this radiativity notion. So this from omega or pass. OK, so, so this is an intermediate notion uh, between uh, the Lipschitz reducibility and the wedge reducibility. So a, if we, OK, I, I, I didn't introduce the notion of Lipschitz reducibility. Uh, but uh, so the notion of Lipschitz reducibility is introduced by Wedge. Uh, so, and we say that uh, uh, Q valid function is Lipschitz sigma join reducible if, okay, so if we, so we restrict a uh, uh, first bit of A, then, then this function must be strictly wedge below A. Then, okay, so now the structure of the two M, two M wedge degrees looks like this. So, so each successor self dual, uh, uh, not the successor, uh, actually, so each self dual wedge degree splits into two degrees like this. So, uh, this is a sigma join reducible part and a non sigma join reducible part. So, each successor. Sorry, not non, non successor, just each self dual wedge degree. Each so self dual wedge degree uh, has a two, uh, so two, two M degrees, uh, something join, sigma join reducible part and non sigma join reducible part. But uh, the other wedge degrees remain the same. But this is a case of two, two M wedge degrees. Okay, so now we consider the the notion, so we, we connect this notion to the uh, M reducibility for real valued function. So for a function from, uh, so for a real valued function, okay, this part is two, two to the omega, uh, define S of SF in this way. So given P and Q, uh, given rationals, so SF P Q X is defined in this way. So, so Zero, this is a zero one bottom valued function. So if Q is less, uh, so Fx is 
okay, x is uh, in the upper level set, then, okay, so returns 1, and x is in the lower level set, then returns 0, but, but if x is in between p and q, returns the bottom. So we, so from a real valued function, we construct a, a p valued function, 0, 1 bottom fun valued function in this way. And then, okay, so we can easily see that f is m reducible to g if and only if uh, sf is uh, tm wedge reducible to sg. So in particular, uh, so the m degrees form a substructure of the tm wedge degrees. But this is a, just a substructure of tm wedge degrees. So previously, I described the structure of the two m wedge degrees, but the tm wedge degrees are uh, far larger than the, this degree structure. So, so actually, very, the t, tm wedge degrees are very different from this structure. So, this, so we need to study more detail about this. Okay, so. But, okay, so, so T, TM wedge degrees are so, so divided into two categories. Uh, one is a, so a property degree, and the other is a non-property degree. Okay, so consider, so given a sigma or a pi or a delta, consider uh, something P, P alpha, so this means that, okay, so this is a t zero one bottom value function, which is below uh, something alpha set. So for example, if we write, so sigma t alpha means that every zero one bottom value function, which is below, uh, which is wedge below a sigma alpha complete set. So, but, uh, okay, but generally, so there are a lot of, it. Zero one bottom valued function, which is not zero one valued function. So, so if we define uh, sigma alpha and pi alpha and delta alpha in this way, so generally, so delta alpha is different from the intersection of sigma alpha and pi alpha. And so we say that that zero one bottom wedge degree is proper if uh, so. This does not coincide the point class which is generated from. Uh, two-valued wedge degree. And, okay, so first lemma is that, okay, so at least, so, okay, every non-proper wedge degree can be realized by a real-valued function. So for every non-proper t wedge degree, there is a function such that SF is gamma D complete. Also for, uh, for delta alpha, okay, so we can also, uh, if this is a Lipschitz sigma join reducible, then uh, there is a function. Uh, so, so this is, so Lipschitz sigma join reducible delta alpha complete degree can be realized by a real, real valued function. But uh, non Lipschitz sigma join reducible delta alpha complete degree cannot be realized by real valued function. Okay, so this is a basic dilemma. Just uh, call the two valued function by a real valued function. Okay, so, but in the case of proper, proper pH degree, so the, the situation is different from the non-proper one. So, yeah, I don't have much time, so I, okay, so I, I will skip the proof of this lemma, but this lemma says that if D is a proper pH degree, then, so this is in between delta alpha and the intersection of sigma alpha and pi alpha for some alpha. So only proper degree can, can be in between the same, same level of delta and sigma pi. So, and okay, so now our main lemma is that if D is a proper zero one bottom wedge degree, then there is no real valued function uh, such that SF is gamma D complete. So the, the complete in, in this wedge degree, in this T wedge degree. So, so, we, so to show this, so we need the separation property. 
as I so. Okay, so just take. Uh, okay, assume that uh, S F is the so the wedge degree of S F is below gamma below d uh, less than or equal to b. This means that S F is contained in gamma d. So then, okay, uh, by the previous lemma, so there exists an ordinal such that this is in between delta alpha and the intersection of sigma alpha and pi alpha. So we claim that uh, every restriction of SF to, to, so after deciding one bit is delta alpha. So this is because, okay, let take, uh, let's take a sigma alpha complete set and a pi alpha complete set, A0 and A1. And uh, okay, so take P0, Q0, P1, Q1 in this way. So then, okay, so by, the, by this property, so SF is contained in the intersection of sigma alpha and pi alpha. So, so and A0 and A1 are complete sets in this, this point class. So SF up to PI, QI is wedge reducible to AI via some continuous function tau i. Okay, so then define B0 to the, the inverse image of uh, the, the complement of A0 and that discontinuous function tau zero, and uh, also let B, B1 be the, uh, the inverse image of tau one, uh, inverse image of A1 and uh, the con continuous function tau one. Yeah, of course, these sets are pi, pi alpha. So, but okay, so this is because this is a wedge reduction. So the meaning of wedge reduction is, okay, so this is a T wedge reduction. So the meaning of T, T wedge reduction is that, okay, so the, so Fx is below P0 means, so X is in the, uh, in the lower level set. So this means that SF, uh, P, P0, Q0, X is, uh, equal to zero. So, so, so this means that uh, ta, the, the, the value of tau zero must be zero. So this means that X must be contained in B zero. And, uh, and so this means, and also, so this is a, uh, so, the, the, so basically, so this means that so B zero separates the level set. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, okay. So because of this reduction, so we can have. So we have that f x is less than or equal to P zero. Then x is contained. In, so tau, tau x is not contained in A zero. So this means that x is contained in B zero. And uh, also, if tau x is not contained in B zero, then F of X must be less than Q0. So we have these implications. But so, as in, so by the same argument, so we have these implications. So F of X is bigger than or equal to Q1, then X is contained in B1, and then F of X is bigger than P1. Okay, so now, yeah, clearly, so by, the, by, by our choice of P0, Q0, uh, P0, Q0, P1, Q1, uh, the intersect, so P, B0 and P, B1 does not have an intersection. So by the, and these are pi alpha sets. So, but by the definition of pi alpha, so we can use the separation property of pi alpha. So by the separation property of pi alpha, so there exists a delta alpha set, C such that, uh, so, so this separating B0 and B1. So this means that f x is bigger than or equal to q, then x is contained in c, then f of x is bigger than p. So this means that, so this c separates this sf up to qq. So, so this means that sf up to pq is wedge below c. So in particular, so sf is delta alpha. So in this way, okay, so, if there is a proper wedge degree, proper zero one bottom wedge degree, then, then we cannot realize this wedge degree by using a real valid function. 
So then, okay, so we can conclude this theorem. So maybe I don't have a time to continue this talk, so maybe I, I should stop my talk at this point. So thank you very much for your attention. Which mirror? Ah, so uh, I, I don't remember which mirror he is. So he did some things with separators mm -hmm. in, in the Borel hierarchy. I think he was, he was also looking with the yeah. degrees. Mm -hmm. Something like you have a, a two pi alpha sets yeah. Borel hierarchy, and, and then there's a separator that's a, a difference of. Uh, Sorry, it's, it's a union. The mm -hmm. difference is at lower levels. This uh -huh. at lower levels. And this seems sort of like it. Uh -huh. you're looking at specific levels. So. Yes. So, uh, I was just wondering if it was actually somehow inspired by uh -huh. Doug Miller's. Which mirror? Doug Miller. Doug Miller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a, I think it